Hello everyone, my name is Maria Konjelska and this is Poland Daily Culture. Or today more Poland Daily Philosophy because we continue our discussions about Polish philosophy and in the previous episode we talked about the beginning and the very initiative of thinking of Leszek Kowakowski. And today we'll continue and show what was his turn in a way of thinking and his breakup with Marxism or Stalinism and how he became the biggest opponent of this way of thinking. With me in the studio is Marek Kondzielski. Thank you again Hello. for being with us. And we talked about Lasha Kowakowski and you explained how he fell in love in a way with Marxism and how he was against uh, religion and he treated it as a opium for people or for the labor class. And of course, it's a, it's interpretation of Marx in a way of Stalinism, and we know it's very dangerous. And we know it corrupted many minds, especially here in Poland, and affected in the times of PRL, which, which was destroying for our country in the same way as was the World War II. And we have to st stress and underline it very strongly. And Kowakowski, as a very strong mind, and I would say as a Tyson in thinking, because he is not as, he was definitely not a stupid person, uh, first of all, believed in Marxism. And my question is, why did, it's less than philosophical, but more about your opinion, why does it happen? Why people who are intellectually very much developed and still can have such kind of romance and why Marxism is so attractive. There is no single explanation to, to this problem. From one hand, we have to remember that Marxism is a kind of quasi-religion. So it shows some eschatological horizon for the masses. And it can be easily used as a replacement of religion. But it has, to some extent, a religious nature in, in this sense. On the other hand, as I mentioned, that Marx's analysis are really profound and they cannot be questioned just like that. There is even more in Marx's philosophy, not to mention the philosophy of mind, for instance, which is one of the, of the most developed. But as far as his social uh, philosophy is concerned, I remember in when the, the, one of the last visits of Pope John Paul II to Poland, uh, when he was in Gdańsk and he had his speech when he said that there are some grains of truth in Marxism theory. So it's not that, that even the church acknowledges that it, there is something in Marx analysis. And it, it, it was a time of, of a revolution. Well, in, in my understanding, uh, I am more uh, strict about this. I believe that Marxism was simply a tool for uh, Russian elites to build a world uh, imperium. Uh, but this is true that uh, Kowakowski started to uh, abandon Marxism, but in several stages. The, the first one occurred something about 57, so after the death of, of uh, Joseph Stalin. Uh, but it was, uh, again, uh, it was philosophy strongly influenced by his agnosticism. But he started to admit that religion is a manifestation of human needs, that it satisfies some needs which are innate in human nature, uh, so it, it's not an opium for the people, not even the opium of the people. Uh, this is something innate in culture and that we cannot imagine a culture uh, without religion, in, in our case, without Christianity. On the other hand, he was still opposed to the church. So he was thinking rather of, of uh, a kind of uh, very uh, prime uh, Christianity without organizational structure, which is not working in, in the long run. Of course, we believe that um, the church has its role. And of course, with all the flaws it has and all the problems, 
as a whole and as a unity is right and um, is, is struggling to fight and is a manifestation of of Jesus here on earth in a way. So it's, honestly it's hard speaking, to, to imagine like Christianity without the church. Honestly speaking, I believe that if it was not a Roman Catholic church, Christianity would have evaporated from the planet Earth already. So this, this is the strongest uh, uh, cornerstone of, of Christianity. And of course, we have to admit and say it strongly that the uh, Catholic Roman Church or played a huge role also for fighting for freedom. And it was the only place during the PRL time when, where people could find this element of freedom where they could say or hear things which were different from the narrative of the state. And which, um, and also we can see it in a way of the, of the prosecution uh, of many great priests during the, by, by the, by the communists. Coming back to the philosophy of Leszek Kowakowski, yes. it was not in the 50s, the, in the middle of 50s, the moment that he was so strongly for uh, the role of religion and Christianity in, in the Western civilization. It was much later on. What is peculiar and interesting about his attitude is, as I said, he went through all major philosophical schools and it was shouldn't be understood that he was just changing opinions. I think it was his curiosity. He wanted to penetrate all major currents of philosophy. So he, he went through all, all major major schools. He, uh, there was a time he was a phenomenologist. He, uh, there was a slight moment he was uh, thinking in an analytical way. He ended up in uh, defending Christianity, in uh, understanding the role of, uh, of religion. And also defending the, uh, the ancient, the traditional philosophy about coming back to Plato, coming back to, to the roots of philosophy, which... I would say that he ended up as a conservatist, but still we have to remember that he was... Uh, what is interesting is in his writing, in his papers, because he published a lot of articles and books, it's a kind of dialogue that he is conducting with himself. Because as he admitted this many times, in, and he admitted this in, in, uh, when speaking and in his papers, that he was a skeptic. He was unable to formulate any final opinion in major philosophical question. But this is all, also very important to ask philosophical questions. So it is equally important on the grounds of philosophy and Kowakowski was asking or started asking fundamental philosophical questions in a situation where philosophy was no longer asking this type of question. So he is also a member of this, of this influence in philosophy which comes back to metaphysics and ontology and asks questions of our being, of God and where we come from and the role of people also our how are we constituted here on earth and which philosophy uh, in a very analytic way stopped asking at all as not important or as I would say childish maybe. And of course he is the one of it. But we will continue to talk about the development of Lasha Kowakowski in the next episode. It's worth mentioning that reading his books is also a fabulous way to learn different about different schools of philosophy because he went through almost all of them. And thank you very much for watching Poland Daily Culture.